Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to show you how to dynamically allocate arrays. So last episode we jumped into dynamic memory allocation, which is basically how you... Well, it's basically just allocating memory upon the heap rather than the stack. And now this episode I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing but with arrays. It's a little different, but not too different. It's pretty simple. And it shouldn't be a long video at all. So, so let me just show you how to do it right off the bat. So. Let's say that you want to make a array of scores, a, and they're going to be doubles, so an array of doubles. So you're going to need a pointer to a double, because of course an array in C++ will be the first address, so you're going to want to have a pointer that points to the first address of the array. Same thing with dynamic memory allocation. So we're going to have a pointer to a double called scores, and that's going to represent our array. That's going to be equal to new double, and then pass in the size of the array, so five in this case. And so what this will do is allocate five doubles inside of our memory, inside the heap, right next to each other. So that will be a total of 40 bytes, considering doubles are usually eight bytes each. So eight times five. And um, so we can uh, therefore, um, you know, give it some initial values. So we would do it, we can access it the same way we would access it with a normal pointer to an array. So uh, we could do scores and you can just pass in the index like this. So score zero is equal to and give it an initial value of 100.0. Of course, um, this is the special syntax that C++ allows, but keep in mind it's still a pointer at the end of the day. So you could also do this. So dereference scores and then like plus one inside parentheses like I showed you before, just like that. So that would be the same thing. Or in this case, you would want to, you would want to do it by itself, but anything after that would be plus one, plus two, plus three. But anyway, we'll just keep it simple with the, uh, the easier syntax. So like that. Um, the second will be 1, and that's going to be 97 or 94.0. Scores 2 will be 84.0. Scores 3 is equal to 78.0. And scores 4 will be equal to 0, 0.0. So they did very badly, as you can see. Anyway, so those are our initial values for our um, dynamically allocated array using the pointer that points to that dynamically allocated array. And now let's go ahead and just print out all of those values just so we can see that they were successfully set so we can make sure we're doing this correctly. So it's going to be a size of 5. And we just want to print out each one. So C out scores i for the index in line. And yes, so now let's run this here and see what we get. So we should get all of these values into the console. Pretty simple. And there we go. So yeah, 100, 94, 84, 98, and then 0. Perfect. So let's say that we're done using this dynamically allocated array. How do we deallocate it, free up that space, just like we did last episode? So to do that last episode, we used the delete keyword, and then we passed in the pointer to whatever that is pointing to. But if it's a um, dynamically allocated array, if you want to make sure that it deletes all of the values um, you know, starting at that pointer address, then what you want to do is put this in front of the name of the pointer and then after the, the delete keyword. So you could have it like this, you could have it like this, you could have it like this. It doesn't really matter, but just have it in between. And so what this will do is tell C++ that you need to delete the array that this pointer is pointing to, okay? So that's just how you do that, pretty simple. Just don't forget that you need the brackets there. Let me get rid of this. And so yeah, that should delete our array for us. So if we run this here, nothing should change. It should be you know, the same as we just had it. Good. Looks good to me. And yeah, that's pretty much it for dy dynamically allocating arrays. But let's look at some other things. What if you want to give our um, dynamically allocated array some initial values instead of having to do it, you know, like one by one or whatever, or looping through it. However, there's an easier way to do it. So normally you would give it a initialization list whenever you're making like a regular fixed array. Um, but for a dynamically allocated array, so you can do, um, let's say we have an array of strings. So string names is equal to new string, and then pass in the size, so three names. Then inside of here in brackets, we, will, we can pass in a initialization list. So we'll give it Ricky, Bobby, and Henry. So those are our names here. And then we could, of course, um, print these out just to verify that this works correctly. And so C out names i in line 
And there we go. So we get Ricky, Bobby, and Henry. So that's just one way you can provide a initialization list instead of having to go through it after you make the after you dynamically allocate it. Okay, so that's an easier way to do that. And uh, just one more thing I want to show you before we end this short episode is um, I told you before that with statically allocated arrays, you know, um, arrays that are allocated upon the stack, you have to give it for the size of the array, you have to give it a constant value. So for example, if we're going to make a string of favorite names, and that's going to be an array, the array um, obviously needs a size unless you give it like a, a special, unless you give it an initial list of names. So you could either just give it, you know, pass it in like that, give it like that, or, but, or otherwise you have to give it a constant. So constant integer size is equal to 45 and then you can pass in size. But if you were to remove the constant in front of the integer, then this would not work. It has to be constant. It has to be known at compile time how big you want to make this array here. So with dynamically allocated arrays, that's not the case. You can actually just pass in a regular variable and that will be the size of the array when you're allocated upon the heap. So let's try that out. So let's change this to a pointer and then we're going to dynamically allocate it on the other side. So it is equal to new string and then for the size we can just pass in size and it could be a constant if you want it to but we can also remove that and now it'll still work with no problem here. So now we have a array, a dynamic array of strings and that should be the size of 45. So we should get 45 strings um, or whatever space that is or we could change it to 4, it doesn't really matter. But let's say um, this is even more important whenever you have a situation in which you're asking the user how many things you want to store. Because um, there's no problem. You could put a constant here, no problem. That's not going to affect you anyway. But if you find yourself in a situation where you're asking for input, then you need to, um, you can't use a constant because, all you know, of course, a constant cannot change. So let me show you an example. So let's say that we have a C out, enter the amount of names you want to store and then they're going to enter that value so we're going to store that value in an integer so enter um, names count and then cn names count and so the names count is going to represent represent how many names we want to store so we're going to change this to names count and this is valid because names count um, if we're dynamically allocating it it does not have to be a constant but it cannot be a constant in this case because we're asking for input right so you can't change a, a constant value, constant variable. So that's a very good situation in which you might want to use dynamic allocation, um, you know, because you don't know until the program is running how big you want the array to be, because you can't read the mind of whoever's going to be running this program how many names they want to store. So from here, once we make our array, we can then loop through it and ask the user how many names they want to, or we want to ask them to enter those names. So uh, we'll put this in front, so C out, enter, and then however many names, so names count, enter five names, for example, there we go, so in line, and then we should get C in favorite names, I, just like that, and that should do the job for us, and then finally, we're just going to do the opposite, and what I mean by that is we're just going to print it out, just for verification here, so C out, favorite names. So all of this should do is basically just ask the user how many names they want to store, dynamically allocate an array based on that size, and then after that they want to ask for those names and then put them into the array one by one, and then after that we're going to print them out one by one, and that should all work. So let's run this now and let's see what happens. And it says enter the amount of names you want to store. I'm going to say four, enter four names. So we're going to say Henry Jenkins Bobby and Joe. And so now we get Henry Jenkins, Bobby, and Joe, which is exactly what we told it to print out. Of course, we should probably add an inline there, but it doesn't really matter. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's a good example of, you know, maybe a situation in which you might want to use a dynamic a dynamically allocated array inside of your program. Also in other situations, you may want to use it because um, let's say you're going to be using a lot of memory. Of course, the stack can only be so big, so maybe if you find yourself maybe needing a lot of memory, it may, it may be a better idea to use the heap or something like that. And uh, yeah, so for now, you're probably not going to be using this too often, except in situations like this where you're going to be asking for input. But, uh, you know, when you start doing some more advanced stuff, you're going to need dynamically allocated arrays even more. And same with the regular variables and objects, okay? And yeah, so that's about it for dynamically allocating memory. 
Next episode, we're going to look at how to return pointers inside of functions. That should be a short video also because it's pretty simple. And then after that, we're going to get into object-oriented programming. All right, so hopefully you're excited for that. Stay tuned for, stay tuned for all of that. And if you have any questions about what I showed you this episode, you, think you can ask in the comment section below. Or you can join our Discord server. We have a Discord server with about 1,000 people. So you can join here, ask questions, get help from our community. And you can even leave suggestions in the suggestions channel if you want to see anything in my videos, okay? So yeah, that's about it for this episode. Um, oh, one more thing I forgot to tell you is that you want to also look in the, in the description for the link to this code here. And it has all of the comments next to all of the code. So in case you didn't understand something in the video, I have a text tutorial kind of thing where it has all of the comments next to the code. So you can read the concepts, concepts and maybe understand them better in case you forget maybe or something like that. Anyway, so that's there for you. If you want that, make sure you bookmark it. I recommend it. And that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.